Hey everybody, so I'm testing out this camera angle. I don't know if I'm going to do this for the vlog or not, where I just film, but the main point of the vlog is to use this camera, excuse me, to use this mic because this mic is going to have a higher quality sound, a richer sound. So I'm just going to answer some questions that were recently put to me on the YouTubes and we'll see how it goes uh, from there. So yeah. Um, Steph, can you give me some tips on how to use libraries to solve problems? I'm really struggling with it. For example, if I want to make a certain app, how should I use a library to solve my problem? When I'm talking about libraries, I'm talking about it could be a framework like an MVC framework, something like a Laravel. An MVC framework is just a framework. It's a bunch of code that basically gives you the basic structure of 99% of web apps out there. So you learn this framework. We can call it a library. It's technically not a library, but it's a framework. A framework is like a very big library with all kinds of other libraries in it. I, again, I'm trying to use non-nerd words here to explain it. Anyway, what you got to do is you got to learn your basics, your HTML, your CSS, your JavaScript, and whatever server language you want to use. You could use PHP if you're doing freelancing. That's my recommendation. If you're going to be doing uh, another thing you could use is JavaScript and Node.js. Node.js is an engine. You have to go look it up. You just do a quick tutorial. Once you do your basics, then you can explore different avenues. If you know your basics, then you're going to have a better idea of what I mean by library. Another library is jQuery, which is used quite a bit, although its use is diminishing in terms of active use. Again, this is stuff that you'll understand much more readily if you do a basic course on web development and basic coding and programming. What it is is that once you do your basics, you're going to have a, a, a better understanding of what's out there. And then you're going to be able to choose which libraries, which frameworks you want to use depending on the type of work that you want to do. So for instance, if you decide you're going to be doing PHP based apps from scratch, you're probably going to want to learn Laravel these days. If you decide that you want to do Python based web apps, you're probably going to be getting into Python and Python Django. Django is this big framework, which is like a very big library again, that makes it easy for you to, uh, to build web apps with Python, et cetera, et cetera. Now, whether you use Python or PHP depends on a whole bunch of different factors, which I've discussed in other vlogs, but you get the idea. Uh, let's say you decide you know your HTML, your CSS, your JavaScript, you do a bit of server-side programming with my stuff, and then you decide to get into uh, React JS because you want to do some React stuff. Well, React is a library, so you would go choose React. You sort of dabble in that. My strategy that I teach people is that you learn your basics, your solid foundational languages and, and technologies, and then from there you just get aware of the basic libraries and frameworks that are out there today, just so you understand when they are used and why they are used. Superficial, and then you would do the same as the equivalent of the hello world with each of these libraries, or at least a couple of them. You don't want to spend all your time trying to learn every single library everybody tells you you got to learn because you'll, you'll never spend time working. It's learn your basics, then start doing some projects, and just become somewhat familiar with the different libraries that are out there. These days, the popular ones are React, JS. If you're going to do mobile apps with WebStack, you're going to do React Native. You might want to learn uh, an MVC framework like Laravel for PHP or Django if you're going to do Python. You want to learn, uh, anyway, you can pick it. There's so many out there. And I think I might do a vlog on top five frameworks or top five libraries I would learn. So. Uh, in the uh, React would be one of them, that's for sure. Uh, at least the basics of jQuery, I would learn that. Although I said, as I said, jQuery in terms of active use, it's kind of fading. I, I get that sense. Uh, in terms of CSS libraries, I would probably go with Bootstrap if you want to sort of want, learn one. Bootstrap three maybe. Uh, then I would get into let's see, let's see. In terms of JavaScript libraries. There's, you know, React is a big one. Vue.js is very good, apparently, for just doing uh, charts and graphs, real-time graphs and charts. We're actually going to be using Vue.js in our Studio Web 4 release. So, again, 
the key is, is not to try to learn every single library in the world. The key is to try to just understand what's out there. And then when you come across a project where you may need a library, you may go, oh, Vue would be good right here. Oh, React would be good here, here. Oh, you know, etc. Then you just learn it at that moment. Like I tell people, I've been telling people for years, the the software developer, the professional software software developer learns on a need to nerd basis on a need to nerd basis because it's literally impossible for you to remember and to learn everything all at once hello can you give me a good sources to learn about json and ajax well if you know your basics in uh html css and javascript then i would just go to the w3c schools they got json ajax a quick dirty tutorials w3c schools is a good place to go once you know your basics well once you know your foundations once you know your foundations then you can go right there and get a quick boom 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 overview and uh, learn all kinds of different things from json ajax to uh, advanced css to bootstrap etc they're pretty good good a good site but again you have to know your basics first once you got that and everything else comes pretty easily Alexandria, I hope you can answer my question on your podcast about the levels of stress in web development. I'm very curious about that factor. Hmm. Levels of stress. What typically happens rather in the web development game is that um, everything has to be done yesterday. That's the usual thing. Everybody's rushing to get the project out as quickly as possible. So the best web development companies or freelancers they learn to manage their time and manage the expectation of the clients more effectively. And that has to do a lot of times with controlling something called feature creep. Because what you're going to see as a project develops, first you set your specifications for a particular web app or any type of app. And then what happens, you have to document that really well. Because if you don't, what you're going to have is clients deciding that they're geniuses halfway through the process say, hey, can we have it do this? Can we have it do this? Can we have it do that? Can we have it do, do this? And the problem with that is going to increase, increase the time that it takes to do things. And if you don't make that clear to them, they're going to be getting pissed off at you if, you know, if you said you're going to deliver by March 1st, but they've added a whole bunch of new features and you're not able to deliver until the end of March, they're going, hey, you said March 1st. And you have to remind them then you have to remind them, hey, you know, you added this and this, and they're going to say, ah, you didn't say, blah, blah, blah. You have to really manage your clients well. So that's the first level of reducing stress in terms of uh, the web development game. If you're a freelancer, a big thing you have to do to reduce stress, because in the freelance world, there's a lot of ups and downs. It would be like tons of work, tons of work, tons of work, so much work you don't know what to do with it, and all of a sudden you're in a drought. Oh, boy. And then, okay, here it comes again. It's very rare that it's linear. It's 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 very... Now, as you develop more and more clients, as you, as you develop good workflows, as you learn how to manage clients properly, you can even this out so it's not like this. Like, tons of work, no work, tons of work, no. It's more like, oh, a little work, okay, a little... So you have to learn to develop workflows, client management skills. You also have to put away the FU money, the emergency money, the money that allows you to live comfortably, sleep well at night. I recommend minimum six months of FU money. This is money that's separate from long-term savings or investment money. This is money strictly for paying your bills in the case of an emergency. Now, I keep a, a two years a yeah, good two years uh, in a separate bank account that I never touch. And people say, you know, I've lost a lot. Of, you know, I have the interest rates I'm getting on. It's terrible. But uh, it allows me to sleep well at night because I know that if everything went to hell, I have at least two years of cash on hand. This is apart from long-term savings, retirement savings. This is apart from funds for vacation or whatnot. I know it's hard to get there at first, but the FU money will help a lot with reducing stress levels. So in a nutshell, and off the top of my head to answer Alexandra's question, how do you reduce stress levels or how is a stress how are stress levels in web development? A big part of it comes from not meeting deadlines. A big part of it is not controlling client expectations. So you have to do that. You have to set it up so you have enough time to do things 
And uh, one of the tricks when you're bidding on projects, especially in the early stages, uh, you have to multiply whatever your calculation is by 2.4. So if you think it's going to take 10 hours, it might take you 24 hours to complete the project. Now, as you become more experienced in bidding on projects, you'll be able to judge this more accurately. And in fact, you get very accurate. And I talked about how to do that in time. But being able to judge how long it will take to do projects is part of the process. And so setting an expectation of delivery dates and being able to judge your time so that you're not working 50 hours when you're only making 30, this is all part of the process. And uh, this is all something I talk about. I've talked about in other blogs in terms of how to manage this. So your stress levels in web development have a lot to do with how you manage your client, how you manage uh, your, your finances so you're never in dire situation and in terms of managing your budgeted or allotted time on a particular project. And I hope that helps. This is the very first test of this type of setup. It's probably not going to be the final way I'm going to do this, but eh, we'll see how it goes. So uh, that's it for now. Nice boat.